a love letter to Lady Bird. I've seen this film feels like a thousand times. It's spoken to me every time, but I never felt as though I truly understood it until my last rewatch. Now I don't know if I get it completely, but it's touched me in a different way than it has before. I used to believe that this movie was centered on Lady Bird and her mother, and that the side characters were there simply for the point of the story. And I used to believe that this movie was about relationships and love. But I think more than anything, this movie is a testament to loneliness. It's the loneliness that everyone feels, but to the different forms of loneliness. In the beginning, we see Lady Bird and her mother in bed next to each other. Yet, they also seem miles apart. They don't understand each other. They don't understand why one makes the other choices. And they feel alone. They feel as though all of their sacrifices on her mother's side and all of her choices on Lady Bird's side go unnoticed. That all the hard work that both of them put in to Lady Bird's life, it means nothing. Both Lady Bird and her mother almost feel completely alone in the presence of each other, feeling a sense of loneliness in their life. Lady Bird makes up for this loneliness with confidence, even though it may seem naive at times. She doesn't need anyone other than her best friend, yet she still wants to experience all of these things. She wants to be loved, and she wants to love. And she does. But she doesn't actually love these people. She doesn't actually care too much about them. I think in reality, Lady Bird was just looking for someone who paid attention to her. But I think Lady Bird often found herself grasping for attention, whether it be through her confidence or through her showing at the assembly about, at the, about abortion. She was speaking up for herself and her views, but at the, to some point, to some extent, she wanted some attention. And she never really got it from any of these side characters. No matter how much it appeared that she did, all the attention was either very minimal, like Kyle or Jenna, or it was somewhat out of obligation with um, her first boyfriend and Julie. And when I say obligation, I don't mean that they felt like they had to pay attention to her, but her acts and her ways of being kind of forced them to. And this is all kind of the first version of Lady Bird we see. This naive, confused, confident Lady Bird. She seems so sure of what she wants, yet she seems to never really go for it, never really try, just kind of hoping that they'll fall into her lap if she acts confident enough, and if enough people pay attention to her. But throughout the movie, especially towards the end, we see a new ladybird. A ladybird who doesn't need the attention all the time, and is simply there for others and for herself. One scene that we first see this in is the one where she hugs her first boyfriend outside of the coffee shop. She cares. She's there for him. Because despite the fact that he lied to her and he betrayed her, she knew that it was about more than herself. And she was okay with that. And I think that the sense of being okay with others having the spotlight. It's something as Lady Bird develops that she realizes that she isn't perfect and that she is not the center of the universe. Whether that comes from Julie yelling at her in the quad or her or from learning about her father's depression and how she might have played a role in it, Lady Bird realizes that other people feel pain too. That even though and that even though she isn't living through something awful, like a war, she still is living through something. One quote from the movie that kind of shows this is when she tells Kyle, you can be sad from anything. It doesn't just have to be war. And I think this shows kind of Lady Bird growing. I think that in the beginning of the movie, she says, I wish I was living through something. But she associates something with something grand, something important. She somewhat wants to be living through a war or through an attack or through something that matters on a global scale, something that she sees as important. But I think slowly she realizes that she doesn't she doesn't need to live through something that matters to the whole world for it to be something. She just has to live through something that matters to her, that makes her feel things, that makes her feel sad or happy or anything for her to be living through something. And I think those emotions come when Lady Bird starts to let go of her confidence and let go of this picture-perfect ideal of the life that she sees in magazines or on television, and then whether it be in the news or on a sitcom. She realizes that her life is important, even if it is only shared and enjoyed by her. And then I think, circling back to the topic of loneliness, I think in the beginning of the movie, that's loneliness is more apparent because Lady Bird feels like she has nobody. And so therefore she needs the entire world. She needs everyone to like her and want her and enjoy her. But towards the end of the movie, you kind of see her abandon this sense of need, needing others as she kind of sees the love that her mother has for her, the attention that her mother pays to her. And I think that's what the story is truly about. It's about Lady Bird abandoning her confidence in so many ways and accepting her herself, accepting her views on life instead of just trying to constantly be, shock be shocking. I think that she finally realizes that her mom loves her, her dad loves her, and she loves all of these people in her life, from Julie to her mother. And that is something. And that it means something.
I think Ladybird realizes that she isn't just living some empty life, but she's living her own life. And I think once she realizes this, she reaches the end of the film. I don't want to say that she grows up, or that she changes in some extreme way, or that there's a conclusion to the story, because there's not. And one of my favorite things about this movie, and maybe it's just me being dumb and not fully listening to the score, but one thing I constantly notice about the movie is how the score never really seems to have a climactic point, except for, you know, the major moments, but just the background score of when they're driving through Sacramento, or they're looking at houses, or they're wandering around in the grocery store. The score doesn't seem to have a climax or a conclusion, more like it. There's no give. There's no conclusion. There's no happy ending to the music. And I think that's what, and I think that emulates the movie. There's no end to the movie. There's just a stopping point. It's harsh and it's not satisfying, but it's real. And it's where Lady Bird's at, you know? She's not done roaming. She's not done becoming a person. But she's in a new phase of her life in a different city with different views and a different name. And so I think that, I don't know what this movie's about. I think it's about a million different things. And I don't know really what I'm trying to say. I just think that this movie, it shows a different side to growing up. And a different side to loneliness. And a different side to love. I think this movie shows that love isn't showing up on that Empire State Building with a bundle of roses. It's not flying a helicopter through a war battle to get to your true love. It's noticing little things and paying attention to someone else or to a place. And as much as you may resent it or hate it, at some point, the attention you pay turns into love, like with Lady Bird in Sacramento, or Lady Bird and her mother. Lady Bird soon realizes that the attention she pays, even though she feels hatred or discomfort with that attention, she loves those things. And this is kind of a long, I'm going on for forever, and no one's probably gonna watch this, but I think that this shows with her religion, <laughs> you know? She, in the beginning scenes of the movie, you see, you see her paying attention to mass, paying attention to the imagery, and the words and the singing and all of it, even if just half-heartedly. And she acts as though she hates it. But by the end of the movie, she's going to church. She feels a connection. And I think that's just a perfect example of how the attention that Lady Bird paid to her surroundings and to her the people in her life, even if, it, if she viewed that attention as a negative attention, or attention because she hated the things, it was love. And yeah, I guess that's all I kind of want to say. I just, I love this movie. It speaks to me, I guess, but I think it speaks to everyone. It means something. Every time I watch it, it means something. And I think it's amazing, so go watch it, I guess. Sorry, this is really long. So, yeah, hopefully I'll see you again. Peace out.